Hello everyone, and welcome to another game from round 8 of the 2018 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. Here we have uh, the sole leader uh, of the tournament so far, Shakir Mamedyarov, uh, facing Anish Giri. Anish Giri has the white pieces, and uh, before I show you the game, I would just like to visit uh, Giri's remark uh, from an interview after this game. Uh, Giri finished this game a lot, uh, a lot sooner than uh, everyone else, so he commented on Carlsen's move, where Carlsen blundered a piece. And uh, he said that it was definitely a blunder, and that he could see that, uh, you know, he could see Carlson wasn't very happy about it, uh, but uh, that Carlson is a piece stronger than everyone else. Uh, so Giri basically said that Carlson can beat anyone uh, a piece down, and uh, that <laughs> this is his time to prove it. And as you've seen in my previous video, Carlson definitely did prove it. Uh, so. Let's get back to this game. Uh, Giri has the white pieces, like I've said, and it's a very important game for the tournament uh, rankings. Uh, as if uh, Giri manages to win this one, he will uh, tie in first place with Mamed Yarov uh, and uh, Magnus Carlsen, who won the game, as you've seen in the previous video. So, uh, Giri opens with c4, the English opening. We have c5, the symmetrical variation, knight to f3, knight c6, knight to c3, and g6. Uh, e3, knight to f6, d4. Uh, C captures, E captures, and D5. We have C captures on D5, Knight captures on D5, and Queen to B3 uh, with a double attack on the Knight on D5. Uh, Mamedyaro defends this, E6, defending the Knight on D5, and we have Bishop to B5 now. Uh, Bishop to G7, preparing the castle. Uh, Giri castles, Mamedyaro castles, and we have Bishop captures on C6. B captures on C6, and Rook to E1. Uh, queen to d6 by Mamedyarov. It's a very active uh, square for the queen, a nice centralized square where the queen will be very active. Uh, knight to e4, of course, kicking the queen away from that very nice square. Queen to b4. And uh, here, Giri declines uh, a trade of queens. Not because he wants the queens on the board, because it's simply bad to, to capture a queen. If you capture, knight captures. Uh, black is already threatening uh, to win some exchanges here after move like rook to d1, bishop to a6 comes and uh, black gets a lot of activity for, for basically nothing. Uh, so after queen to b4, queen to c2 by Giri and we have a5 now. a3, kicking the queen away, queen to b6 and knight to c5 now. Uh, rook to e8 and now knight to e5 and uh, this knight on e5 is an excellent piece knight on c5 is also an excellent piece so you definitely don't want to leave those knights there but it's very hard to get rid of them uh, you don't want to play bishop captures on e5 giving up your very strong dark square bishop then you know uh, the, the, you will have a lot of a lot of weak squares here around your king so Mamedyarov decides to go f6 he, this does weaken the king side a bit but uh, it's better to get rid of that knight uh, knight to c4, attacking the queen, and we have queen to c7, and bishop to d2. Uh, now there's a double attack on the a5 pawn, and Giri is preparing queen to a4 to gain a triple attack on the pawn. Uh, e5 now, d captures on e5, f captures on e5, and we have queen to a4 now, uh, attacking that pawn three times. Uh, we have knight to b6. Uh, forcing the queen to either move or to exchange the knight. And here Giri exchanges it. Knight captures, we have queen captures, attacking the knight on c5, and here queen to c4. This comes with check, king has to move, now the queen is also protecting the knight on c5, and we have bishop to c3. Now, this will be a very a very important square for this bishop, as uh, he will be attacking this e5 pawn, this pawn will uh, not be able to move uh, because bishop captures on g7 will be deadly uh, for black and uh, it also protects the b2 pawn, also very important. Uh, we have bishop to f5, Mamedyarov tries to, tries to develop, uh, he wants to connect his rooks, get his pieces into the game and here Giri finds the best move, he plays g4. And what's the idea behind g4? It seems like uh, he's just offering uh, Mamedyarov to win a pawn, it seems like bishop captures on g4 Queen captures on g4 and queen captures on c5, seems reasonable. Uh, the problem is, after bishop captures on g4, you don't capture the bishop immediately. You first play knight to a4. Uh, now the queen is attacked and the bishop is attacked and there is there is no way for queen to defend the bishop. So after you play something like queen to b5, simply capture the bishop and the queen is now also protecting the knight on a4, so black just lost a piece and the game. 
So after g4, uh, he goes back. He can't really go back to e6. The queen and knight and the, are, are defending that square. Knight is defending d7 also. So unfortunately, he has to go back to c8. So bishop to c8, and here we have rook to e4. Uh, adding more protection uh, to this pawn here, as you can see, Giri, uh, Mamedyarov doesn't have a df pawn or the d pawn to harass this rook with a pawn, and is preparing rook a to e1 to double up rooks on the e file and really go for this e5 pawn. Uh, queen to b5, offering an exchange of queens, and <clears throat> Giri ignores this. He simply doubles up, as this is much more important. Uh, queen captures on c4, rook captures on c4, and rook to b8 now. And this does activate the rook, but uh, what's the rook really doing on b8? It doesn't seem that he will ever be able to do anything, as this bishop is doing a wonderful job guarding this b2 pawn. Uh, and uh, uh, Mamidyarov's pawn structure is simply terrible. He has, he has holes everywhere. Uh, this is an isolated pawn, this is an isolated pawn, this is an isolated pawn, and soon another isolated pawn will be created. Uh, we have h3 by Giri, uh, defending that g4 pawn, and here we have h5. Uh, whether it's a good decision or not, it's hard to say. Uh, if anything, uh, he thought about probably uh, after Gary captures and he recaptures that uh, the bishop will now be eyeing the h3 pawn. But this actually only creates another weakness for black. So we have g captures on h5 by Giri, g captures on h5, and now rook to h4. Uh, defending his h3 pawn and attacking the h5 pawn. And if you look at the pawn structure now, uh, okay, Giri's pawn structure isn't, uh, you know, spectacular, but uh, look at the Mamedyarov's pawn structure. A weak pawn on a5, all of the pawns are isolated pawns, there are four pawn islands. Uh, this pawn is attacked, this pawn is attacked, uh, this pawn will soon be, uh, well, it, it's attacked, but uh, it's very hard for, for Mamedyarov to do anything here. Uh, here, Mamedyarov played king to h7. <clears throat> Uh, this is with the idea that if Giri captures the h5 pawn, for example, rook captures, then he can play king to g6, and after rook to h4, then bishop to f6. And uh, this will give Mamedyarov some activity back for the pawn, as the rook is now attacked, it has to move, uh, the bishop will be again attacking the h3 pawn, the rooks can come into the game. Uh, unfortunately for him, after this king to h7 move, uh, Giri played knight to e4. And uh, <clears throat> it was in this position after Giri played knight to e4 that Mamedyarov resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, there is no any immediate crushing move for Giri here, but there is nothing for black to play. Uh, this rook is useless here. This rook doesn't really have anywhere, any, any idea so where, where it wants to go. It, it can go to d8, but it's not really useful there. Uh, you don't have a good square to develop your bishop. Uh, you can't go to e6. If you go d7, that's just weird. Uh, okay, let's let's see if you can maybe play bishop to a6. Uh, rook simply captures on h5. After king moves, rook to e3. This rook is now coming to g3. Uh, hard to say what black can play here. Rook to e7, rook to g3 now. King moves now knight to d6, uh, preventing uh, black king any escape routes, and uh, uh, Giri will probably check the king here, forcing him back to g8, and then capture the e5 pawn, the bishop on g7 will be pinned, uh, this will then release Giri's c3 bishop, and this will be crushing for black, there is, there is nothing for black to play here. Uh, again, after this knight to e4 move, uh, what's, what's the other idea black can go for? Uh, there is this, uh, maybe the straightforward defense of king to h6, but if king to h6, then you have a, you have a couple of ways to approach this position, maybe bishop to d2, check, uh, but then this leaves the defense of the b2 pawn, so king to h2, probably, king to h2, preparing this rook to come to g1, and then cut off the king completely, uh, for example, rook to d8, now rook to g1, bishop to e6, uh, trying to help out with defense uh, of this h5 pawn, uh, but now knight to g3. And here's the problem, uh, you can't defend the h5 pawn. If you play something like bishop to f7, then comes knight to f5 check, uh, you move, then check comes, you move again, you lose the piece, and uh, you're getting checkmated here. Rook captures, king's here, uh, rook g7 check, king f8, and rook h8 checkmate. So, although there isn't really any move that immediately wins, whatever black plays, uh, like, loses uh, very soon. 
So Mamedyarov did not want to continue this game, he resigned and Giri now is tied in first place with uh, Magnus Carlsen and Chakrier Mamedyarov with 5.5 points. Uh, you already heard that in my previous video, but in case you haven't seen it, uh, that's the standings now. I was uh, very much looking forward to maybe showing a, a, a whole Yifan game against uh, Fabiano Caruana, uh, but she she didn't have any luck in today's game either. Uh, she lost. Uh, uh, she she played the longest game, and it was a it was a rook ending, and in the end she had to resign due to being two pawns down in the end game, or maybe even three pawns. I, I think it was actually three pawns down. So yeah, uh, so far she only has two draws, this is round 8, but 13 rounds, there's still 5 more rounds to go, uh, a, lot, a lot of things can happen here. So yeah, uh, that's the game, and uh, like the title says, uh, no more Giri jokes, uh, you know, it's been a long time since Giri was uh, <laughs> uh, was the artist who, who drew every game, uh, it seems that uh, those days are over, as this is his third game uh, in the Tata Steel Chess Tournament, uh, third win. Uh, out of eight games, three wins and five draws, no losses. That's that's a pretty pretty amazing result in such a such a competition. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Jordanis uh, Taglaridis uh, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, both will be from the Tata Steel Chess Tournament. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon.